I don't drink water. Fish is in it. Look, I'm not afraid of storm. I piss against the wind. A little bit about me. I am free of all the prejudices. I hate everyone equally. Oh, my political views. Um, I have never voted for anyone. I have always voted against. First of all, let me read you one of the poems that I have written. It's just a couple lines and it is that a man without a woman, a man without a woman is like a neck without pain. Uh, that is it. That's uh, quite a philosophical poem there. Okay, here is the motivation. If you fail in doing something, try again. If you still fail, try again. Then quit. Uh, no, I, I, I know. I understand. Of course. Um, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just this very humble guy, so I don't want to go into... Okay, let me get back to my normal avatar. I wish ego and the recognition of ego was that simple. As much as I wish those jokes belonged to me. So Mr. Deluded was what most people would associate ego with. That's what the society calls egoistic. Hyper deluded personalities. Narcissist personalities. Abusive, violent, authoritarian personalities. Fascist personalities. But ego is not really this evil thing. Ego is really this natural tool. It's as much part of us as this body. It is there for a very important reason, that is to help us stay alive. Coming back to the topic, have you heard people saying the voices in my head are tricking me or the voices in my head are playing games with me or something like that? A lot of times people even write things like these in suicide notes. And for a meditator, these things are something that he is well aware of and he's acquainted with. That is the first step when you um, start exploring meditation. That recognition comes fairly quickly, that the voices in my head is not me. Let me expand on that. Think about it like there is a radio in my room. And the radio is this artificially intelligent radio. So it's almost like a smart assistant. When I am going to go outside on a rainy day, it tells me things like, don't forget the umbrella. Or when I'm going to go to sleep, it asks me, hey, have you made sure that uh, the door is locked? Now. Just imagine that this radio or this personal assistant, it starts becoming more personal and more random. So let's say I'm lying on my bed and this personal assistant or this radio goes about telling me random uh, mumblings like, do you remember the time in high school when someone bullied you? Or do you remember the time when uh, you felt insulted? Or something like that. Or pompous ambitions like, hey, you're so talented, the way things are going now, you should be able to become the most successful student in your graduating high school class. So on that high school reunion, you're going to be the shining star. Now, obviously, it looks stupid to you. You probably turn that assistant off when you go to sleep. And a lot of people do think about ways through which they can get rid of the thoughts in their head. But the thing is, the more efforts you put in, the worse it becomes. So what do you do? And that's where meditation comes in. With meditation, you start understanding what ego is. It's like that smart assistant. It tries to help you out. But often that also causes you to suffer. So where these thoughts stem from? is the evolutionary desire to stay alive. Just think about it when uh, there are mammals in the forest. Let's say a tribe of monkeys and a monkey is chilling there. And suddenly he sees all of his tribe members running towards something or running away from something. Well, if he does not have that instinctive urge to follow the tribe, there are obvious chances that he will be the first one to be killed. So because of this, you have got these instincts programmed in you like fear of missing out like uh, being afraid to take big decisions, being afraid to do something that is not popular amongst the masses, being afraid to raise a voice when uh, the popular opinion seems to be against you, things like those. So with meditation, we understand this radio and assistant, and we understand that it's trying to help us, and we recognize it, but we also understand that we don't have to identify with everything that it's saying because it's overall, it is just hint and directives, just like suggestions to help you stay alive. It's nothing more than that. You don't need to think that it is you. You are distinct from it. You never have a thought. You are not the source of your thoughts. You are not noble or wise. Your thoughts may be noble and your thoughts may be wise, but they are way distinct from you. You are this silent entity that is unaffected by thoughts. You are like a sky and thoughts are like the clouds. 
and almost 99.9% of people are not even able to make that discern- discernible difference in their life. But ego is this tool that is present in all sentient beings. It was present in uh, me when I was born and it will be present in me when I die. But the hack is to not identify with it, to have that distance and recognize them. That is it. And you would gradually start to notice that there are times when there are no thoughts in your head. You did not put any efforts to control the thoughts. You just stopped identifying with them. When you identify with thoughts, when you instinctively get emotional with thoughts, that is like nurturing and feeding them. When you don't identify with them and they become like that radio that you're not even caring about, they start to starve and that's when silence uh, is felt. And then gradually you start living in those moments of peace where thoughts don't bother you. Well, I hope this video was educational and we all learned something. I'll see you in the next video.